Hello guys, welcome back to the best Dominion cards list. This is part 14. We are still looking at the cards costing 5 and this is ranks 41 to 32. Rank 41, Pillage from Dark Ages. Yeah, Pillage is the next Dark Ages card and has the highest deviation in this whole list. On one side it has 7 votes above 70%, on the other side 7 votes below 20%. It's over 4 percentage points better than Council Room and would be one rank higher in the unweighted list. Pillage is a very nasty, very strong attack. Discarding key cards from opponent's hands is very strong and can be devastating if your opponent draws, for example, King's Court and only one action card. But it being a one-shot makes it hard to rank. You don't want to buy it too late as you need one shuffle to attack and another shuffle to use the two spoils, which are one shots themselves. Picking it up in big money games in mid game when you don't necessarily need more silver, it's often probably better picking up a pillage to slow your opponent down as you will definitely profit fr profit from the uh, from the two spoils that you get. But it's probably best in engines, where you draw most of your deck, where you have at least, let's say, 13 coins, so that you can buy a province and another pillage. Attacking each turn is really annoying and strong, and as the spoils themselves already give you 6 coins, it's not that hard to accomplish. Especially with the university, it's good as you can just regain it each turn. But I think we need more time to evaluate it correctly. Rank 40, Market, from the base set. Market is one rank higher and 3.5 percentage points better than last time. Market has only two votes above 70% and only two votes below 20%. The unweighted ranking it would be one rank lower. Market is a nice addition to most of the decks, but it is no super strong card. You want it most of the times because of the cantrip plus buy as an addition to your main strategy, because plus buy cantrips are rare and essential for an engine because you may already have stronger terminal cards. And it is also superior to silver in all but big money games as you draw a card and get an additional one coin. The non-terminal plus buys are very important in some combos too, like a highway market chain. Market usually is no good opener, but Market Chapel is strong on, and is on 31 on the best openings list. Rank 39, Trading Post from Intrigue. Trading Post was voted 10 times above 80% but still only a 0.1 percentage point lead over market as it still had a lot of low votes. It's one rank lower than last time. Trading Post is another card in the category good opener but bad afterwards, like Chapel. No surprise the deviation is still high. It's really hard to evaluate. It costs 5 coins and is only an important opener in about 30% of all 2 player games. But with 8 openings in the top 50 of all openings, with Trading Post Haven on 13 and Trading Post Lighthouse on 23, that still shows its strength. If you compare its ability with mine as an opener, it can trash 2 instead of 1 card and it can trash all card types and isn't limited to treasures. It's especially strong in torturer games as you can trash the curse right away. But Trading Post has fiercer competition in, in the 5 coins list, so its downside of getting weak soon was taken more into account by all of you. Rank 38, Band of Misfits, Dark Ages. Band of Misfits is another Dark Ages card and another one with really high deviation. It was voted 8 times above 70% and would be 3 ranks higher in the unweighted list. Band of Misfits heavily depends on the board, even more than cards like Throne Room. It's probably the most board dependent and the average card. On boards with a lot of cards costing 5, it's basically useless. But it can also be very strong, especially with cards that are strong but only a limited period of time or need specific other cards in hand, especially Ambassador or cards like Sea Hag, Throne Room, Moneylender and Conspirator. Band of Misfits is a great card. Its flexibility is great, especially when you can play it as a cantrip or a village in worst case. But on boards with power 5, Span of Misfits can really be a trap card. Keep also the downside in mind that you can't copy cards that aren't in the supply anymore. What can be problematic with cards costing 4 like Caravan, which piles tend to deplete. 
Also keep in mind that it only copies the on play part and can't copy reactions. Rank 37 Venture from Prosperity Venture keeps falling in this list. Once, as honorable mention in Theory's top 5 non-attack 5 cost list, it dropped last time already 8 ranks and this time another 4 ranks. It's this time below average and would be even 1 rank worse in the unweighted list. Venture is very similar to the plus 1 card, plus 1 action, plus 1 coin, plus bonus cards like market, treasury or highway. It draws a card, gives 1 coin and doesn't cost an action. What is the bonus of Venture? Being a treasure card, it can't be drawn dead. And it has a filter effect finding another treasure card. So you're guaranteed 2 coins when playing a Venture, ignoring edge cases like Potion and Horn of Plenty. Making it another almost strictly superior to silver 5 cost treasure card. The filter effect allows you to go green earlier because you can discard the green cards with Ventures. This reminds of Adventurer, in the name of course. While an adventurer in a copper free deck gets you at least 4 coins and venture only 3 coins, venture is still superior because it's one cheaper and doesn't cost an action and is also chainable. Ventures are great if you have multiples and as few other treasure cards as possible. If you manage that, they can even be superior to gold. I like to add that the multiple venture stacking effect is no additional bonus, just the result of the two above mentioned bonuses as multiple markets in a thin deck would have the same effect. Venture Chapel is on 63 of the best openings list. Rank 36 Knights from Dark Ages The next Dark Ages card in this list with a small lead over Venture of 0.2 percentage points. Knights has the second highest deviation in this list with 4 votes above 80% and 3 votes below 20%. Many already said about Rogue applies also to the Knights. This is the highest rated trashing attack but is still only average. They only hit cards costing between 3 and 6 and your opponent can choose if you hit 2 possible targets. Two big downsides. But unlike Rogue at least they can attack every time you play them. Another downside especially in multiplayer games is that it gets trashed if another Knight is trashed. But this makes it also an interesting pickup purely for defense. The different bonuses are probably responsible for the high deviation and it's what makes this card either ignorable or very strong. We look deeper into the different knights another time, but if you get Dame Anna early or can get Sir Michael who can double attack, this can make a big difference. But when Sir Martin is on the top you don't want to be the one who opens the way to stronger knights for other players. Like every uh, trashing attack, this card is very strong if you can guarantee to play at least one knight every turn and can be devastating in thin decks as you basically are guaranteed to hit good cards and is ignorable in all other cases. Rank 35 Merchant Ship from Seaside After a big jump of 10 ranks better, it now falls again 4 ranks. It's 3 percentage points worse than last time and was voted 6 times above 70%. It would be even two more ranks worse in the unweighted list. Merchant Ship is a very simple card. Still, it is ranked very differently. While Harvest gives you not guaranteed 4 coins, this now is a guaranteed 4 coin card. Just split over 2 turns. It's good for big money games as it increases the probability to have 8 coins early as you only need 6 coins in hand in the following turn. And if you manage to play e one each turn, this is basically 4 coins every turn. The probability of colliding merchant ships is also lower because of the duration effect. In comparison to many other 5s where you either don't guaranteed 4 coins or guaranteed 3, this card can be really strong. But there are still many, especially terminal 5s, that are superior. Rank 34 City from Prosperity City has only a lead of 0.1 percentage points over Merchant Ship and stays on the same rank. But it's about 1 percentage point better and has a pretty low deviation for a middle ranked card. City is also highly dependent from the board. On many boards you just spend 5 coins for a mediocre village which is worth 3 coins. But with Cursors, where the Cursors are likely going out, this can be very strong and especially in multiplayer cities are very strong. 
When activated, a level 2 city is already a combined laboratory and village, so basically a card costing 6. A level 3 city is a combined laboratory, market and village and would normally cost around 9 coins. In non-coercing games, this is often a trap card. If one player goes for cities to run this pile out, he's just buying villages and doesn't build up his economy. Then you do much better, not buying any city, and try to end the game as fast as you can. In longer lasting games, especially colony games, cities are much stronger, but you really have to consider if you want so many villages. As already said, in free or more player games, any pile can deplete faster and cities are therefore much stronger. If you have won the city split and have level 3 cities, you just have to be sure that you don't lose on a free pile ending. But as many of us only play 2 player games, this wasn't taken that much into account. Rank 33 Counterfeit from Dark Ages. And the next Dark Ages card in this list. And of course it has a really high deviation. It was even voted second last, but also on rank number 5 once. In the unweighted list it would be 3 ranks higher. Counterfeit is a throne room for treasures, combined with a trash for benefit card. It's a way better money lender, as it also gives free coins for trashing coppers, but gives also a plus buy, doesn't cost an action, and isn't limited to coppers. It's therefore a very strong opener, but it's also strong in the end game when you can trash golds that you don't need anymore, which is st still stronger than Salvager, which costs an action and can trash golds only for 6 coins, while Counterfeit gives 7 coins. The best combo might be uh, counterfeit and spoils. This gives you 7 for a card that you had to trash anyway. The biggest problem is that it costs 5 coins and not 4 what most of those comparable cards cost. Rank 32 Chunk Dealer from Dark Ages. A little bit better ranked is another Dark Ages card. Chunk Dealer has much more agreement though. The obvious comparison to Chunk Dealer is Upgrade. Both are cantrip treasures. While Upgrade gets you a potential extra card, Chunk Dealer gives you one coin. What's better really depends on the board. Unless you want those free poor houses, Chunk Dealer is way better than Upgrade in Trashing Coppers because the one coin extra helps you a lot in not losing the tempo. Trashing Shelters depends on if there are spammable two cost cards like Hamlet that you need. And with Estates it's similar, although Silvers are rarely a bad choice. Later in the game, Chunk Dealers are probably a dead card, while Upgrade could still trash 4 cost cards into duchies or themselves into gold. You rated Upgrade higher, we'll see if this stays like that. Yeah, thanks for watching, we had a lot of Dark Ages cards this time in this list. But there are still, I think, 5 cards left from Dark Ages, so we'll see how they will rank, and I hope you tune in next time. See you soon, bye!